Hey everybody, I want to spend some time today going over a common question that on the face of it seems pretty simple and the more you dig into it the more you realize there's there's a fair amount there to to process and so the question that I got was from a member and he asked what was the easiest way to determine the previous week number and if we look at week number here's the the crux of the problem which is we've got we've got 52 weeks times seven days a week and that's 364 so in each year there's an extra day and then for leap years there's two extra days and those those one or two extra days ends up causing a lot of problems and so if we if we look and create a um, a measure off our dates table let's just create a new measure and we'll call it max week number and in this in this analysis we're using the enterprise DNA extended date table and this has this ISO week number and um, this is this is quite helpful and so what we can do is we can look and say okay let's take the max of the ISO week number and let's drop take a table and we'll drop year and we will drop our max week number and what we see here is interesting that we see this sum um, this data set I've got 10 years of data and what we see is the first two years have 52 weeks then we've got two years with 53 weeks, three years with 52 weeks, and then two more years with 53 and one with 52. So there's there's not really a, a discernible pattern here. Um, it's not easy to go back and say, okay, in predictably in this year you're going to have 52 weeks, and this year you're going to have 53. And so the next thing you may think of if you're familiar with DAX time intelligence functions is to use the date add function which shifts a range of dates back by a given period or periods and if you look at this it does that really well for day month quarter and year but it doesn't include week and so we're gonna have to find a different way of doing this by week and in the the enterprise DNA extended date table that we're using um, Melissa de Corte has included a function called offsets and let's take a look at, at those because those are going to be absolutely key in solving this from a DAX perspective and so I've got this dates table and this is just what I've done is I've, I've run her dates extended dates query and then just um, selected only those columns that are going to be relevant to this analysis so basically the date and year and then the the week columns we take a look at this offset that what we see is and it, it actually helped to go to the current date um, so yeah so here we go so we're at um, January 20th and what you see is you see offset equals zero and so what the way offsets work is for the current period offset gets a zero and so if it's if it's the current week for a week offset if it's the current year for a year offset or day for daily offset um, and then the the next previous period gets the the the, the first previous period gets a negative one so the, the week prior to the current week gets a negative one. Two weeks prior to the current week gets a negative two and so forth. And then it goes forward from the positive numbers, which is next week then gets a one. Um, two weeks out gets a two. And all the way for this year up to week 49, um, given the week that we're currently in. So... Um, and these adjust dynamically so that when you when you open the date table for a given report it calculates the offsets each time you open the report relative to today's date and this is incredibly powerful and it I'll show you in a minute how easy it is to to tackle some difficult problems like 
this previous previous week number when you're using offsets. And so let's let's actually do that. Let's let's create a DAX measure and let's call this new measure. Let's call it um, previous week number. And where we're going to start with this is we're going to we're going to declare a variable and it's a selected week offset. So for the given the given row, we're just going to do a selected value of the the week offset. So in the current row, it's going to draw that week offset and put that in in our variable. So then what we want is the next variable will be result and this is the ultimate result that we want and we're going to use calculate because we're going to be shifting context and then what we want is we want the max ISO week number and that's going to be subject to these filter conditions so filter and then we're going to remove all the all the filters on the the dates table so we'll use all here if we had a date slicer we might want to use all selected but for now we don't we're just going to use all to remove the the filters from that dates table and then we're going to say the the week offset is going to be equal to our selected week offset minus one. And so this, this is where the offsets become so powerful because you can't use week number minus one because that resets every year. So, you know, 50, 53 minus one or one minus one minus one is zero when it should be 52 or 53. Um, but because the offsets are sequential, you can treat it like you would treat finding the previous year and just subtracting one for each previous year. And so this, this offset functions just the same way a consecutive number would. And the reason this works is, as we talked about previously, the offsets are consecutive. that They don't reset from 52 or 53 back to, to 1 each year. They just continue along the, the positive numbers as we go further and further out in time. So we can, we can now take and um, close off that. We can now take and close off that filter condition, close off calculate, and just return our result. And that's our measure. And let's take a look at how that works. So now what we've got, let's, we can get rid of this since we now know we have 52 and 53 weeks. And let's give some more room here. And let's drop that previous week number measure in. And what we see is it's it's doing exactly what we we'd hoped, which and we can scroll down and see that that in in week fifty two for the for then period one in the following year the previous week is fifty two, and then stepping back by one each period and then if we go down here to week 50 52 it knows that the previous one is 52 when we get to week one and then as we go further down where we've got a 53 week year let's keep going Yeah, so here's one in, in 2021, 53 week year. In the next um, 
the next year's first period, the previous week is 53. So this is operating exactly as we as we'd hoped, and um, you can see the power of offsets in making what would otherwise be a difficult calculation quite simple. So the question then becomes, what do we do in cases where we don't have an offset? So let's say you're working with a corporate date table um, that comes from your, your data warehouse, and it doesn't include these offsets. What can you do? And so there's a technique that I want to show you in Power Query that the first time I saw it was in a blog entry by Imke Feldman in her um, by accountant. And I'll put that blog in the comments because she's subsequently written a lot about different ways to optimize the technique I'm going to show you and um, ways to modify it for different circumstances. So um, I'll pop that in the comments. But the, the approach I'm going to show you now works really for any situation in which you can order the the table in in ascending order and it doesn't have to have a um, an offset it doesn't actually have to have even a date field it, it could be um, an entirely different type of table that just as long as it's sortable in ascending order you can use this technique and so what we're going to do is we're going to take this this table and Let's. I always like to keep the raw data intact. So let's let's reference this this table, and we'll call this we'll call this dates. And so there's a number of important steps we want to take first. the The first one we want to do is we want to make sure to sort this in ascending order. Then what we want to do is we want to group by week. And the reason for that is we're going to be adding two index columns. Um, and we'll see why in a minute. But when we add those index columns, we want those to be at the week granularity, not at the day granularity. So we'll do a group by. And we can group by a number of different columns that identify week. I think week ending works fine here. And then we'll also add our ISO week number. And the function that we want to do here, we'll call this all data. And the key here is the all rows function. And what that lets us do is perform operations on the group table that we can then expand back out to the full original complement of rows. And so if we do that, now what we want to do is we want to add those index columns. And the important thing here is that the first index we add is going to be a zero-based index. And then we're going to add a second index that's a one-based index. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this column, and you can actually merge a table on itself. And that's what we're going to do, but we're going to merge it on itself based on the two different index columns. And what that's going to give us is a shift in rows. So if we take this and merge the first, the zero based index to the one based index, what we see is it, it matches 50, 521 of 522 rows. And that's exactly what we'd expect because the second table is not going to pick up the zero index since it starts at one. And so if we go OK here, now all we've got to do is just expand this out properly, and we're good to go. So what we want to do here is just expand the second expansion out, just using ISO week number. And what that is going to do is give us our previous week number. So let's rename that. Okay, and now all we've got to do is now expand out our original, our original grouping. And we just want to take out um, so that we don't duplicate the week ending field and the original ISO week number. 
and we should be good to go here. So close and apply. And we're back out to the daily granularity, but with the weeks properly numbered. And so let's take a look replicating what we did in DAX. So let's take this, instead of the dates raw this time, let's take the dates that we've, we've worked through in Power Query, and we'll take the, the week ending field, and then the week and year, ISO week number, and we'll make sure that we don't aggregate that. So we'll don't summarize here. And now we, we just want to do the same with previous week number. And we don't want to summarize on that either. And what we can see here is that if we scroll up, we get exactly the results that we got in our DAX column, in our DAX measure. And so as we scroll down and we look to that first week here, we can see then that we've got week 52 and we go first week here and week 53. So it's working exactly as our DAX measure did, but in this case, we didn't need to use the offsets. So that gives you two different ways in kind of very versatile fashion of finding previous week number. Hopefully maybe adds a tool or two to your toolbox. Um, if you did find that helpful, please throw it a like. And as always, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.